Hey everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to look at how do antiderivatives help us solve first and second order differential equations. So from the previous video, we talked about antiderivatives and how can we recover the function from its derivative, and that process is called antidifferentiation. But we need to use antidifferentiation in terms of application problems in this video. And we're also going to solve first and second order differential equations where we are given initial conditions. So antiderivatives play several important roles in math and its applications. And the methods and techniques for finding antiderivatives will play a major role in this chapter as part of solving the area problem in calculus. So we're going to talk a little bit about differential equations. Differential equations is an entire course in mathematics. It's usually after Calculus 3, sometimes called Calculus 4 or Introduction to Differential Equations. We are just going to touch the basis or the basics of differential equations. So here's the idea. We're going to find an antiderivative for a function, lowercase f of x, and it's the same problem, it turns out, to finding a function f of x that satisfies a differential equation dy dx, or it could be replaced with y prime, equals f of x. So in other words, it's saying this is called a differential equation because dy dx is a derivative, and this is an equation involving a derivative. If the derivative is f of x, what is the original function which would be the antiderivative? So to solve the differential equation, it's not like solving an equation for x. We are trying to solve a differential equation. We need to find a function, f of x, that satisfies the equation involving derivatives. And the function is found by finding the antiderivative. So that's the connection with antiderivatives. Sometimes with differential equations, you may have conditions given in the problem that can help you find this arbitrary constant that arises with finding the antiderivative or family of antiderivatives. So we can fix an arbitrary constant that arises in the antidifferentiation process if we are given a condition, and these conditions are called initial conditions, where you have the function f or y evaluated at some particular x value and you're given the y value or the output at that input value x naught. The combination of the differential equation with this condition, this initial condition, is called an initial value problem, or some people just refer to it as an IVP. So we're going to solve IVPs in example four. Solve the following differential equations with the given conditions. So we're going to solve number one, find f of x if the derivative is equal to 12x squared plus 6x subtract 4 and f evaluated at 1 is 1. Okay, so this is what's called a differential equation. The f prime of x can be replaced with dy dx. So we need to recover the original function. So if f prime of x is equal to 12x squared plus 6x minus 4, then the original function, f of x, would be the antiderivative. So keep the coefficient, 12. We found out from the previous video we need to add 1 to the exponent and divide by the exponent when you have power functions. So keep the 6, add 1 to the exponent on the x, and divide by the same exponent. And then the antiderivative of 4 is just x, negative 4x. And then you have this arbitrary constant c. Let's do a little bit of simplifying. So lowercase f of x is equal to 12 times x cubed divided by 3 plus 6 times x squared divided by 2. Subtract 4x plus c. And this, of course, gives us the function 4x cubed plus 3x squared, subtract 4x plus c. And that's the general antiderivative, or family of antiderivatives. What makes this problem different from what we we're talking about in the previous problem is that 
we can actually determine the value of C by using the initial condition F of 1 equals 1. So if F of 1 equals 1, then you can replace all the X values by 1, and the Y value must be 1, which is the F of X. So 1 equals 4 times 1 cubed plus 3 times 1 squared, subtract 4 times 1, plus c. We're going to treat c as a variable. And so we find out that 1 equals 4 plus 3, subtract 4, is 3, plus c. And then to isolate c, subtract 3 on both sides of the equation. And so the arbitrary constant must be negative 2 to satisfy this differential equation and this initial condition. So therefore, we found out the original function, f of x. It must be 4x cubed plus 3x squared, subtract 4x, subtract 2, after you replace the c. So we have solved a differential equation. Okay, let's try another problem, number 2. This time, we need to find lowercase g of x if the derivative, g prime of x, is equal to 24x squared plus 24x. And the condition is g of 0 is negative 6 this time. So again, we're going to approach this as the same way as number 1. We are given the derivative, and we need to solve this differential equation by obtaining the original function by using anti-differentiation. So g of x would be, notice that these are power functions, so keep the coefficient, add 1 to the exponent, and divide by the same exponent, so that would be 2 plus 1 divided by 2 plus 1, plus 24, add 1 to the exponent on x, makes it 1 plus 1, and divide by 1 plus 1, and then you have this constant c. Simplify. So g of x is equal to 24 times x to the third divided by 3 plus 24 times x squared divided by 2 plus c. And so that means g of x is 8x cubed plus 12x squared plus some constant. So now we're going to find c the same way as we did in the previous problem by using the initial condition. So if g of 0 equals negative 6, that means if you replace all the x values with negative with 0 in the function, then the y value must be negative 6. So negative 6 is equal to 8 times 0 cubed plus 12 times 0 squared plus c. Well, if you replace all the x with zeros, you'll have c equals negative 6. So that's the arbitrary constant that satisfies the condition. And then that means that the original function must have been 8x cubed plus 12x squared, then to track 6 after you replace the c. So this is how you solve a differential equation. You find the antiderivative, which will give you an arbitrary constant, because you are finding the antiderivative. That satisfies this differential equation, but then if you have a condition, you can find the value of the constant. So now we're going to see another application of solving differential equations, first and second order differential equations. And this is called rectilinear motion. Anti-differentiation plays useful in analyzing the motion of an object moving in a straight line. So that's why it's called rectilinear motion. Recall that an object's position is given by the position function, s equals f of t, and the velocity of the object is the derivative of the position function. So that means if you are trying to find the position function and you have the velocity, you need to find the antiderivative of velocity to obtain position. Likewise, if you have the acceleration function and you're trying to find the velocity, you need to take the antiderivative of acceleration to find the velocity. So this is introducing second order differential equations. If you're given acceleration, you find the antiderivative, which will give you velocity. Then you can find another antiderivative of velocity 
which can give you the position function. So if you know the acceleration function and the initial values for position and the initial value of velocity, then you can find the exact or particular position function using anti-differentiation. So let's try example five. Rectilinear motion, suppose that a particle moves in a straight line. It has acceleration, a of t equals 6t plus 4. Its initial velocity is v of 0 equals negative 6 centimeters per second. And the initial displacement or position is s of 0 is 9 centimeters. And the question is find the position function, s of t. So the question is asking us to find the position function s of t. So let's go through this in steps. If the acceleration is 6t plus 4, and we know that acceleration is the derivative of velocity, then we have the following. If we want to find velocity, we need to take the antiderivative of acceleration. So 6t plus 4. Let's find the velocity. Velocity would be the antiderivative of 6t. So keep the coefficient. Add 1 to the exponent. And divide by the same exponent. And then the antiderivative of 4 is 4t. Notice that we're using t because the variable is t this time, not x. And then we have this arbitrary constant at the end, plus c. So let's do some simplifying before we find out c. v of t is equal to 6 times t squared divided by 2, plus 4t plus c, which would be 3t squared plus 4t plus c. So we found the antiderivative, we found the velocity, but we don't have the particular velocity for this particle in motion. So if the initial velocity is negative 6 centimeters per second, then we can replace time with 0 and the velocity with negative 6. So negative 6 is equal to 3 times 0 squared plus 4 times 0 plus c. And you'll find out that c must be negative 6. So we just found out the velocity function. So therefore, the velocity function v of t is equal to 3t squared plus 4t subtract 6 for the c. So now, notice that we have the velocity function now, and we also have the initial position of the object, or the particle. So we can find another antiderivative to find the position function. So if the velocity is equal to 3t squared plus 4t subtract 6, and we know that velocity is the derivative of the position function, then we can just repeat this process. So then we have the following. Velocity is 3t squared plus 4t minus 6. We need to find the antiderivative of velocity to arrive at position. So the antiderivative of 3t squared, keep the coefficient. Antiderivative of t squared is t to the 2 plus 1 divided by 2 plus 1 plus 4. Antiderivative of t would be t to the 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1. And then the antiderivative of negative 6 would be negative 6t plus, we'll call it d this time, it's some other arbitrary constant. Do not call it c because we already found c is equal to negative 6. So now we can approach finding d the same way as we found c. We know the initial position or displacement when we replace the time with 0, the displacement is 9 centimeters. So if the original displacement is 9 centimeters, then we can replace t with 0 and the output with 9. So 9 is equal to, let's simplify the position function first. So we have 3 times t cubed divided by 3 plus 
4 times t squared divided by 2 minus 6t plus d. And that simplifies to t cubed plus 2t squared subtract 6t plus d. Okay, so now let's pick up where we left off. We'll replace all the t's with 0. So 0 cubed plus 2 times 0 squared subtract 6 times 0 plus d. And for the same reason as we found c, d will be equal to 9. And so we found out the entire position function. The position of the object, f sub t, is t cubed plus 2t squared subtract 6t plus 9. And so this gives us the position of the object or the particle at any time t. So this is called solving a second order differential equation because we start off with the second derivative of position. We found the first derivative of position, which was velocity. And then we found another antiderivative to get back to position. So we've solved a second order differential equation. So we start off with a second derivative. So another type of second order differential equation comes from uh, noticing that the acceleration due to gravity for an object that's near the surface of the Earth is constant. So the object that's near the surface of the Earth is subject to a gravitational force, and this force is a downward acceleration, so the acceleration will be negative because the acceleration is downward, and it's usually denoted with a lowercase g for gravity. If the motion is close to the ground, then we can assume that g is just a constant, so the acceleration due to gravity, if you're in metric, is 9.8 meters per second squared, or it could be 32 feet per second squared if you're in English units. So we need to use this observation before talking about example six. So we're gonna talk about a free falling object. You have a hot air balloon that is ascending at a rate of 12 feet per second. The height is 80 feet above the ground when a package is dropped. And then the question is, how long before the package will reach the ground or hit the ground? So let's see what we're given. We know that the derivative of velocity is acceleration, which is negative 32 feet per second squared. So all the units are in English. We're gonna use the acceleration due to gravity which is negative 32 feet per second squared because the gravity is pulling the package down towards the ground. We also know that the, the original or the initial velocity is 12 feet per second. And the initial height, which is talking about the position of the package, is S of zero equals 80 feet. So this looks like a second order differential equation. We have the second derivative of position. We have the initial conditions for velocity and position function. So let's solve the differential equation. So if the acceleration is negative 32 feet per second squared, is the acceleration due to gravity then we have that we can find an antiderivative to obtain the velocity function. So the velocity, the derivative of velocity is acceleration, negative 32. If we find the antiderivative, we obtain velocity, which turns out to be negative 32t plus c. So this is the antiderivative of acceleration, which is velocity. So now notice that we have the initial velocity was 12 feet per second. Then we can substitute in zero for time and the velocity is 12. So 12 equals negative 32 times zero plus C 
and so c is equal to 12. So the velocity function v of t is equal to negative 32t plus 12. So this gives the velocity of the package after time t in seconds. So now notice that we have the velocity function which is the derivative of the position function. So if velocity is negative 32t plus 12 and we know that the velocity function is derivative of position then we have that we can find the position function by taking the antiderivative of negative 32t plus 12 and we know that the antiderivative is s of t equals negative 32 is a coefficient add 1 to the exponent so t to the 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 plus the antiderivative of 12 is 12t plus and this time again we have another arbitrary constant so let's call it d now do some simplifying first so s of t is equal to negative 32 times t squared divided by 2 plus 12t plus d which simplifies to s of t is equal to negative 16t squared plus 12t plus d so now we have a condition that can help us find the value of d the original position of the package was 80 feet above the ground. So if s of 0 is equal to 80 feet, then we can replace t with 0 again to find out that the height was 80 and find the value of d. So 80 is equal to negative 16 times 0 squared plus 12 times 0 plus d. And so again, we're going to find that d is equal to 80. So now we have the entire position function. The position function s sub t is equal to negative 16t squared plus 12t plus 80. So notice one thing before we finish up the problem. The negative 16 is the coefficient for t squared. Negative 16 is 1 half times the force of gravity. So that's why you have negative 16. The 12 is the coefficient for the t. That was the initial velocity. And the 80 is the constant term, and that is the initial position of the package. That will always be the case with particles in motion. So now we're going to talk about when does the package hit the ground. The package hits the ground. Hit the ground when the position function is equal to zero s of t equals zero so we have a quadratic equation zero equals negative 16 t squared plus 12 t plus 80 notice that all the terms have a um, negative four in common so factor out a negative four you'll have four t squared subtract three t subtract 20 equals zero and so divide by negative 4, and this gives 4t squared subtract 3t subtract 20 equals 0. But this is as far as it can be factored, so now use the quadratic formula. So solve the equation using the quadratic formula. And you'll find that there are two solutions is approximately 2.64 and this is in seconds or you'll have t is approximately negative 1.89 seconds so of course you cannot have negative time so the package will hit the ground approximately at 2.64 seconds so this gives you another idea of how to solve a second order differential equation if you have any questions about how to solve either first or second order differential equations, please let me know. 
or if you have any questions while you work on the homework, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about the area problem.